Hi, everyone. Welcome to Kiki and Kibitz. It's Mary, and I am here with Roommate to Inmate, Season 2, Episode 5, You Turned Your Back on Us, Recap. I apologize. I am almost a week late with this, and um, it's just been kind of crazy, but I wanted to get this out there for you guys because this was a really good episode, okay? If I may say so myself, this season of Inmate to Roommate is really, really fucking good. So let's get right into it. So first, we have Marisol and Jim, okay? Um, Mickey is not coming out. Mickey has to serve an additional six years, um, a minimum of 14 months on those charges that he didn't tell Marisol and Jim about. Um, the one about running from law enforcement, assault, and all that good stuff. And Marisol and Jim are, are still, you know, upset and feeling deceived and lied to that, that Mickey just conveniently forgot to tell them about these additional charges. So we see Marisol and Jim going to court, okay? Cameras are not allowed in the court. And basically, we learn that Mickey is going to have to serve six years, a minimum of 14 months. So he's not moving into Marisol and Jim's house, not just yet, okay? So when they brought him out of court, Jim asked the cop, oh, can I speak to Mickey for a second? And the cop is like, no, I got to get him back to the jail. Sticks Mickey in the car. So uh, Jim and Marisol go, you know, to the jail and speak to the same officer that informed them the last time that Mickey had all these charges that they didn't know about. They go in the back. They go to speak to Mickey. Jim tells Mickey, listen, one thing that I cannot take is when someone lies to me. So please tell me the truth. Look at me in my eyes, man to man, and tell me the truth. Did you lie to me about these charges? And Mickey looks at him and says, no. And I'm like, okay, but technically, didn't he lie about these charges? I mean, you already know. I mean, if Mickey, if, if Marisol and Jim say that they don't they didn't know about these additional charges against mickey and mickey didn't tell them about the additional charges was isn't mickey technically lying by omission i, I don't know so um even though marisol and jim are very disappointed in mickey they say a prayer over him everybody prays and um Jim says, let's just pray for Mickey because there are a lot of Mickeys out there who need help. So let's just pray for Mickey. So that's where we are. Mickey is serving his 14 months. Marisol and Jim said one final prayer and we shall see. Will Marisol and Jim be on Inmate to Roommate Season 3? Who knows? Moving on. Adelisa Veda and good old Mark. Okay. Excuse me, guys. My allergies are freaking killing me. Okay. So, they want to help him get a real job. Okay. They, they actually want him to, you know, adjust into the real world because, after all, he is a young boy in a grown man's body. Okay, I mean, basically, he went into jail when he was 17. So he stuck at that mentality of the age that he was when he went into jail. So um, Anna, Annalisa wants to hook Mark up with resources that'll help him get a job, um, or help him get a driver's license. But Mark is all about that quick money. Okay, so, you know, Mark is just kind of looking at Annalisa like, yeah, okay, whatever. So Annalisa's like, why don't we do a mock interview so, you know, you, you can learn these skills, you know, so you can get a job. And he's like, huh, what's that? So, you know, they sit down 
they try to attempt to do the to, to do the mock interview, but it didn't work out. Okay. And Annalise is frustrated. Mark is frustrated. And of course, Beta, Beta steps up. Okay. So um, there's this, let's see. There's this resource called um, the Urban League that basically helps people that just got released from jail with all of these skills, okay? Helps them get their driver's license, helps them with a resume, doing interviews, how to dress for an interview, how to present yourself for an interview. Because like Mark said, the only job Mark ever had was as a street pharmacist, okay? So he has no idea about how to set himself up for legit success. So this program at the Urban League, okay, has all of the resources and the people that work there, like the man Mark sat down and talked to, have the same experiences as, as Mark, okay? The guy said that, you know, he served some time in jail and when he came out, you know, a program like this helped him. And, you know, Mark is, you know, looking at him like, you know, this, this, this makes sense. Maybe there's light at the end of the tunnel. Maybe I could be helped. You know, maybe Annalisa's not banging her head against the wall for no reason. You know, maybe these crazy old people I live with are starting to make sense. But we shall see, okay? Because Mark was all positive when he left this um this this urban urban league career bridge place, okay? He's like, yo, me and the guy Josh, we have the same background, and and you know he understands where I'm coming from. So hopefully this will set Mark off on the right path, and he'll realize that Annalisa and Beta have nothing but good intentions towards him. And at least a, a bit of a control freak. Don't get me wrong. She's a bit of a control freak. But hey, she has every right to be. It's her house. So moving on, we have Daniel and Kathy. And let me tell you, Kathy is fucking mad. Kathy is mad AF at Devin, okay? That, that that girlfriend that he that that he saw before he left Colorado, I don't know. I saw so many comments from you guys that he had hickeys on his neck. I went back to look, and yeah, it did look like a hickey. And um, within days, within days of him being in being in Kath, um, da Daniel and Kathy's house, he was arrested for drug possession. Okay, drug paraphernalia, drug possession. And Kathy, let me tell you, Kathy is pissed the fuck off. Okay. And Devin calls them because no one has bailed him out yet. So Devin calls them and Devin's talking to Daniel. And he's basically saying that he feels like everybody has turned their back on him. Okay. And Kathy flipped the fuck out. Kathy was like, no, we haven't turned our back on you. You turned your back on us. Like, what the fuck did you expect us to do? Go out and get the drugs for you, hand them to you and say, here, Devin. No, 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 dude. You turned your back on us. Okay. So, <sighs> Kathy, Kathy had to think long and hard about letting Devin back into her house, okay? But she's going to do it. If she's going to do it, Devin was bailed out. They don't know by whom, okay? They have a feeling that either his sister or his grandmother, you know, kind of bent and, and gave in and bailed him out. But they don't know exactly who bailed him out. But Kathy drove to the jail to pick him up, okay? And she wants to talk to him before she makes this final decision, okay? Because she feels loyalty 
to his grandparents, but she knows, you know, that this is not going to be easy already within a couple of days. Devin was arrested for drug possession. And of course is deflecting and blaming everyone else except for himself. So this is going to be a long, hard road and his grandparents must be really good friends with Kathy and Daniel because I don't know. And so moving on, we have Cindy and Jennifer. And I feel bad for Jennifer, okay? Because Cindy, she has lots of issues, okay? Um, besides that, her foot had been um, amputated due to an infection that she got um, after she had COVID. Um, you know, Cindy is able to get around, okay? She she does use a wheelchair, but I'm sorry, she is capable of perhaps running her own errands and not expecting Jennifer to be her Cinderella. So it starts off where um, Jennifer's been there for about a week, okay? And Cindy is, you know, going through all of her junk. It reminded me of an episode of Hoarders, to, to, to make a long story short. Jennifer would show Cindy a piece of junk, a piece of plastic. I'm going to throw this out. And Cindy would say, no. I could use that for, for something else. I could use that to paint in the garage. I could use that here. I could use that there. No, don't throw that out. Are you fucking kidding me? So, it's basically, she wants Jennifer to be around 24-7 to help her. Okay? This woman has so many issues. Her house, I'm sorry, is fucking disgusting. It's an episode of Hoarders, okay? She wants J Jennifer to go run all of her errands here, there, and about the town. Jennifer, for her part, okay, just came out of jail, wants to get a job, wants to get back on her feet wants to reconnect with her children, wants to, you know, mend the bridges that she burnt, but she's too busy doing things for Cindy. And she knows deep down inside, if she continues to live at Cindy's house, she's just going to be her Cinderella. And this is making her really anxious, okay? Because it's kind of like she has nowhere to go. She's been out for like what? a week, okay, and she's starting to realize that living with this woman may not be the best idea, okay, so unfortunately, Jennifer relapsed, okay, she woke up Cindy, hysterical, telling Cindy she needs to get the detox, okay, and Cindy didn't know how to deal with it, so she called her friend Angela, so we see production, talking to Jennifer, Angela talking to Jennifer, Jennifer's hysterical, okay? She's like, I haven't even called my mom yet. My mom is going to be so disappointed in me. I, everyone's going to be so disappointed in me. I can't believe I did this. She is hysterical. Angela's going to take her to the hospital. And that's where her segment ended. And, you know, Cindy, uh, I'm sorry to say, Cindy did not help with Jennifer detox, um, relapsing. I know ultimately Jennifer relapsing is her responsibility, okay? No one stuck the pipe in her mouth or put the needle in her arm but her. But Cindy didn't help with the circumstances, okay, thinking that she had herself a little Cinderella straight out of prison, just saying. Okay, so now... Moving on, we have, oh, this is why I say this season is so fucking great, okay? We have J Jason and Emily. Now, Emily, dear, okay, if you're so nervous about having your identity stolen again, 
because she says 13 years ago her social security number was stolen and it like ruined her life ruined her credit ruined everything okay why in the world would you agree to let this man who says he thrives on chaos stay in your house okay so now the first few minutes of jason getting out honestly tells me everything okay they're in the car they're gonna go have lunch and jason is like you know trying to make small talk with emily you can see emily is super uncomfortable super duper uncomfortable and um jason who oddly reminds me of chance from love after lockup i don't know what is it about him that reminds me of chance maybe because jason's kind of an asshole to put it kindly and he cracks jokes that he thinks are funny but aren't funny and so there's a lot of his mannerisms that remind me of chance from love after lockup so um and if you guys are familiar with chance from love after lockup you would know that is not a compliment so um jason he is concerned about three things right now three things okay cigarettes the casino and coochie okay he hasn't felt the touch of a woman in three and a half years he has been surrounded by his words not mine hairy men for the past three and a half years and he is longing for the touch of a woman okay so he wants a cigarette he wants to go to the casino and he wants coochie and Emily's like, no, 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 none of that shit. No, you are not having any strangers coming to my house, period. Okay. And he's like, but what do you mean? I, I, I wanted to see a friend. And Emily's like, no, no strangers, visitors in my house period and by the way did i mention that after i take you to lunch in this place that you're not gonna like i'm going to work so you're gonna be left alone in my house on the first night after getting out of prison emily darling what the fuck are you thinking so anyway they go to lunch okay and jason is just ungrateful he's like oh there's nothing on this menu that i like what the fuck is an avocado doing on a burger blah 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 got chicken skewers didn't like the chicken said here emily eat the chicken okay then he's like i gotta take this phone call it's his friend margarita and you know he wants to see margarita he wants to have some margarita okay so to make a long story short emily's like no way you are not seeing anybody in my house and that is my bottom line jason you better not break this rule and jason's like oh yes yeah, sure don't worry blah 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 okay jason thinks that he is mr smooth he can manipulate his way into having anybody agree with whatever he wants to do okay so anyway they go back to the house and jason is you know he's surprised how nice the house is he thought that the house would be you know considerably run down because of the pets um so okay give me one second i just oh so one part i forgot at the at the restaurant that he didn't like he was hitting on the waitress right in front of emily he's just like openly hitting on the waitress and he's like you know part of my manipulation is i don't necessarily think the waitress is pretty but i just want to hit on her to show that i still have it i'm like dude please shut up so they get back to the house and one of the main rules 
besides no strangers is don't let the pets out, okay? Because if the pets get out in that neighborhood, she's not going to get them back, okay? So Jason is surprised at the condition of the house, you know? He thought it was going to be a little more run down. And Emily leaves. And as soon as Emily leaves to go to work, guess what? He calls his friend Margarita. And Margarita comes on over. You know, my question is, why couldn't he go to Margarita's house? I guess Margarita didn't want Jason at her place. She said, no, fuck that. I'll go where he is. I don't want to let him know where the fuck I am. So she goes over to um, Emily's. And as we see in next week's preview, Emily catches them. Okay. And flips the fuck out. So that's where we are right now. And like I said, I am so loving this season. We're already on episode five. Um, I'm feeling it's it's halfway over or a little more than halfway over. So uh, let's see what happens. Thank you so much for watching me, guys. Please subscribe if you don't already. Hit that like button. Share my video with a friend or 10. And please consider joining my membership. Thank you so much. See you next time. Bye.